have anger? Do you got anger? And the answer is yes. When I, uh, in our in our coaching, ask people, hey, you you deal with anger? Um, a lot of times people will say, no, I don't. No, anger is not a problem. And of course, anger is a problem to most people, not everybody, but to most people. So, and I think that's probably because people really don't understand anger, what it's about, uh, some of the manifestations of it. So we'll talk about those things today. All right, so let's let's just have a good time here. What, the Bible says a lot of different things about anger. And one of the, one of the scriptures that I want to just read to you, at least in part, is found in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 9. So again, if somebody can just put in the comments the scriptures that I referenced, that'd be great. Um, again, Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. And um, I'm not going to read the whole passage, but it says, Anger lodges in the heart of fools. Anger lodges or anger dwells in the heart of fools. So what does that mean? Does that mean that when we're angry, we're a fool? Well, we need to understand that because the Bible is very clear that even God himself gets angry. So if God himself gets angry, we know God is not a fool, okay? Additionally, we as, as the people of God, this, the saints of God, citizens of the kingdom of God, we're told to be angry but don't sin because of that anger. So if, we're, if, if we know God gets angry and we're told that, were to be angry, but not sin, then in reconciling back to that scripture in, the, in Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, that anger lodges in the heart of fools, what are we to make of that? Well, let me, let me help you out here. So when you study the word of God, and there's specifically two Greek words in the New Testament alone that are translated as anger, and one word means passion, energy, passionate energy, like a force, okay? But it's speaking, again, about passion and about energy. The other word means agitated, to be agitated to the boiling point. In other words, boiling over. So when we think about that, you need to understand that from a biblical perspective, anger is God-given energy that's intended to help us solve problems, okay? Anger is God-given energy, force, passion, drive, determination that is intended to or for us to solve problems. You've heard um, Dixie and others state that anger can be used to create, and it is absolutely too true. You can be very, very angry about something and it can actually become a motivator to and, and a force and energy that will have you to create or to accomplish something that actually solves a problem i know in my life there's been times in perhaps you as well where you've been angry and you just really worked hard to solve a problem sometimes we can have uh, some type of a sporting event where we become angry because we've been losing or we we've almost you know we 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 lost by one point or one run or what have you uh, maybe we're not controlling our our free throw or our, our 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 pitch or whatever it may be we could become angry and use that as a motivator to actually begin to work harder and solve the problem that gives us that passion gives us the determination gives us that energy so Again, that's one way of looking at it. And of course, the other one is boiling. Now, in the in the word of God, let me give you an example. Remember when Jesus went into the temple? Okay. Um, matter of fact, that's in John chapter 2, verse number 13. I'll actually start reading it. It's uh, John chapter 2, verse 13, <clears throat> excuse me, through 17. And I'll read that. And this is an example, okay, of passion and energy. All right, from an anger or an anger used passionately and, and energetic. Uh, the scripture says, and it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. So the Jews went to Jerusalem. 
In the temple area, he, talking about Jesus, saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifice. He also saw dealers at the temples exchanging foreign currency or foreign money. Jesus then made a whip, okay, from some rope, and he chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep. He drove out the cattle. He scattered the money changer uh, coins all over the floor and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who, who sold doves, he told them, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace or place of merchandise. Okay. Then his, it says, then his, watch this now, then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion, King James Version uses the term zeal. Passion for God's house will consume me. What a great example of anger. Actually, biblical or God-given anger. Okay, remember, God gets angry. Used passionately and with energy to, to, to actually fulfill or many times we use the term righteous indignation, but fulfill that which God has us to do. And what a great example that we see with the Lord here in John chapter number two. Now, again, remember I said that anger can also be and is also um, agitated or being, being to the point where we're boiling over. So in Genesis chapter number four, and verse number five, let's let's look at that. That would be an example of um, being to the point where you're agitated, you're, you're at the boiling point, and things are not going to go well. And in Genesis chapter four, verse number five and six, and of course, this is the story of Cain and Abel. We know that they both, both brought sacrifices, offerings, as it were, to the Lord. And Abel brought a sacrifice, Cain brought a sacrifice, and we pick it up here um, as it pertains to Cain. It says, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. Talking about the Lord, talking about God. Goes on to say, so Cain, watch this now, Cain was very, very angry. And his face fell or his countenance fell. Have you ever seen somebody, or perhaps it's even you, where you you see, you can tell, even on the outside, that somebody is angry. Their whole confidence changes. When you're to the place of boiling over, when you're agitated, you can feel your confidence changing. You can you can you know that something's happening, even biologically. Okay, your 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 whole confidence is changing. You can feel it. Okay, maybe your face turns red or your ears get red or whatever it may be. It's because you're steaming, you're brewing. This is what's happening with Cain. He was <clears throat> very angry and his face fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? So again, two types. Now, which type do you have? Well, we're going to go into that. We're going to have some fun today. Matter of fact, we're going to give you guys a little quiz today. Um, that you all can take and kind of see where you're at. So um, sit back and enjoy, and let's get into this. Now, what causes anger? Okay, what what causes anger? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that cause anger, but think of anger. There's there's two sides to it. Okay, we know there's two types: righteous and unrighteous, as it were. But there's two types of influences that cause us to anger. Now, let me let me just say this. A lot of times people say, well, you made me angry. Well, technically, I, I can't say you made, keyword made, you made me angry. We don't make somebody angry. You can participate in something with me that you become angry at i can i can do something and extend my anger to you and you can if you grab hold of it as you if you connect with it then yes 
by that by that definition, you have become angry, but I didn't make you angry. Okay. Just like somebody can't make you be offended. You have to make the decision to become angry. Now, what I do or what is done around you can influence you, but it doesn't technically make you. If it made you, then this is what we can do. What we'll end up doing is we'll end up blaming everything and everybody else for our anger. We'll look to justify okay, our anger. So when I'm angry, I now say, well, you made me angry. No, what you did caused me to become angry. That's the way to say it. So you may be married. You may be in a relationship um, where you live, regardless of where you live or where you work or where you go to church and worship. Okay. Maybe your children, maybe your parents, maybe your spouse. And there are things that they can do that can influence you to become angry, but you own your anger. Okay. You need to say that out loud where you're at. I own my anger. That's one of the things that when we, when we, when we coach with people, we, we get people to, to be responsible for their emotions. We take people sometimes through confessions that has them to understand that they are responsible for them. So we'll have people will say, say this, I am responsible for me. I am responsible for my actions. I am responsible for my feelings. I am responsible and own my emotions. So I, so I don't blame how I feel and I don't blame my emotions, including anger, on everyone else or the world around me or on this group or that group or this, you know, whatever it may be, I own it. And by owning it, I can now deal with it. If I don't own it, then I'm going to project it or cast it or assign it to something else. And it's just going to become very detrimental to me as well as the society I live in, because we're just going to have a bunch of angry people. Of course, that's what we, what we have. So there's two particular things as it pertains to us becoming angry, not being made angry that take place. One is external influences, things that happen outside of our lives. These are things that happen. Um, they happen outside, but they happen to us. Um, there were different circumstances surrounding uh, that external stuff that that happened, um, whatever those things were that happened to us and around us, those are what we call external influences. Okay, we may see something, we may experience something, somebody may do something, somebody may say something, okay, uh, somebody could abuse us, that's external, they abused us, they attacked us, uh, slandered us, whatever it may be. Okay, so that's that, that, that is an influence. Those are external influences as it pertains to what causes anger. The second one, of course, is just the opposite of that. It would be internal, right? It would be internal influence or internal factors that play into us becoming angry, not being made angry, but becoming angry, okay? And internal factors would be the things that happen to us and all around us what those things mean to us. So somebody said something to me. Um, I remember years ago, um, back in the early 80s, of course, my wife and I, we are in what is referred to as an interracial marriage. And of course, in the early 80s, when we, when we got married, um, it wasn't as acceptable as it is today. And there would be times that both of us would hear racial slurs against us. And we would hear these racial slurs from both races, both black and white people. Many times, not always, many times she would hear she would hear the racial slur from white people on average and I would hear it from black people. We were both attacked. It wasn't always like that. Many times it was both black and white attacking both of us black and white. Okay. And that though, that would be considered something external. That was an external influence, but how we took it would be the internal factor or the internal influence. What, 
What did that mean to us? What did it mean when I was called something, you know, evil, something, some slanderous or some type of ridicule or whatever it may be? What, how, how, what did that mean to me? What did that mean to my wife? What, how did I feel about that? Well, it, it's, it's more about how I feel about myself. So when somebody says something derogatory to me or to her or to you, how it's more important about how you feel about yourself. It's not necessarily important about what they say. Why? Because we can't control what other people say. People have a right and people can say whatever they want. People can do whatever they want. We can't control what other people say or what other people do. What we can deal with and what we can control and what we should control is how we respond to things. So the internal factors would be what those things that are external mean to us and how we feel about ourselves because of those things that externally have happened uh, or are, are happening at, you know, at that, at that time. Okay. Um, but understand this, then when we talk about external or internal factors, both, both the external and the external factors interact through, through our behaviors. This is why I'm saying we have to own our own behaviors, okay? So the way that we react during a situation, what that reaction is going to determine what the outcome will be as it pertains to our anger, okay? How do I react to what's taking place externally and, of course, internally, what's happening? How am I going to react to that? Well, that's going to determine... The, 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 the basically the outcome of how I'm going to manifest or demonstrate my anger. Is it going to be passionate energy or is it going to be agitated, boiling over? Which is it going to be? Okay. My reaction is the key to it. Not the fact that it happened. Okay. I think we're, we're so focused on, I know when we're counseling and coaching, ministering, delivering, uh, people um, in going through that process is the focus is so much on the outside, all the external factors, the thing that's going on. And we have to bring people back to the place where they look at the internal factors, because once internal, you're okay, then you'll be able to easily handle the external factors. Okay. Most of the time, honestly, guys, most of the time when we get angry, it has to do with our self image, the view of ourself doubting ourselves, being uncertain, unsure about ourselves. okay? Or it could be by being threatened by somebody, manipulated by somebody, okay? We could become angry because of that. Those are, you know, some of the primary reasons, and we'll go a little bit deeper into that uh, today, okay? But many times what we do is we take the things that happen and we take them personally. Let's just be honest about it. We take it personal, okay? And we take it personal, and if you really look at some things, it really doesn't have anything to do with us. So even if somebody is speaking ill about you, why do we want to own, you know, that person speaking ill about us? Why is it that we have to say, well, you know, that is, that right there, I, I I take ownership for what that person said. You can't do that. You have to own you. You have to deal with you, okay? What they said is what they said about you, but it really has nothing to do with you, at least it shouldn't, from your perspective. So if I'm called out of my name, or if somebody does something, whatever, again, it doesn't have anything to do with me because I can't own their behavior. If I own their behavior, I'm going to have a real hard time dealing correctly with my anger. My anger is going to become agitated. It's going to become that boiling over cane type of anger. Now, how that how that operates internally in me, we'll go into a minute. Is it passive or aggressive? Okay. But again, I cannot, I cannot personally take things personal based on what other people um, do. Now, I'm going to have a real problem, and I can speak for me, 
I had this problem years and years ago. Okay. And again, I'm not perfect. I, let me be transparent. I'm still working on me. I'm going to always be working on me. Okay. It's a full-time job working on me. This is why I always tell people I don't have time to fix other people. Okay. Co our coaching lane is not about fixing other people. Our coaching lane is exactly what it says. It's about coaching somebody to the place where they can own their behaviors. They can understand why it is that they behave the way they behave the way they do, and they can make the changes that are necessary um, in their attitude, in their behaviors, in their life commandments. And of course, if it's something demonic, we can certainly root that out. Okay, but I can't fix other people. Okay. I can't fix other people and neither can you. Stop trying to fix your husband. Stop trying to fix your wife. Try Stop trying to fix the pastor. Stop, stop trying to fix the congregants. Stop trying to fix everybody else. Fix your friends. Well, I'm going to fix them. I'm going to, I'm going to, no, deal with you. That's where you're, it, it takes a lot of energy to, you'll, you're going to expend a ton of energy. Okay, you'll be fatigued by the end of the day trying to fix everybody else's problem. Just deal with you. When you stand before God, he's not going to ask you about what somebody else did. It's all, it's, it's your lane. Stay in your lane. It's your life. Okay. So now let me, let me just say this real quick. If, if we, if we see ourselves um, Defective, if we see ourselves unworthy, worthless, if we see ourselves as a bad person, then internally anger is going to be a problem for you. Okay. If you are one who's prone to take offense, and let's stop the dialogue that or the or the, the statement that says, You made me offended. Nobody can make you offended. You have to, like the Bible says, take an, an offense. Okay. So if you it easily offended, anger is going to be a problem for you. You're going to have a real hard time managing through that. Okay. So let's, let's begin to talk about how, and I want you to look, look at your own life and ask yourself the question, how do you express your anger? Okay. Well, you get angry. I get angry. Okay. It is what it is, but how do you express it? Again, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 26 and 27, the Bible says, be angry. Again, be angry. Be angry and do not sin. Do not. Okay, so first time you have be angry. Now you have, but do not let the sun or the day go down or end on your anger. Then it goes on to say, and give no opportunity to the devil. See, when you're angry and you don't properly navigate the anger, deal with the anger, address the anger, understand the anger, okay? Uh, allow, again, as, as we mentioned previously, I said it, Dixie said it, Tasha said it, anger is not a primary emotion. It's a secondary emotion. So when you're angry, you should be asking yourself the question, what's going on internally with me? What's happening? And you need to do that quickly. Don't put the anger off for another day. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Deal with it. What's going on? Are you going to use it as a, as a, as a force, as an, as an energy, as something that you, you know, creates passion in you or has you or you're passionate about to solve a problem or to, to create something? Or is it going to be where you're just going to brew, you're going to become agitated into the boiling point? If you don't deal with this, the Bible is very clear. You're going to give opportunity to the devil, to the enemy, to the kingdom of darkness to really bring uh, mass destruction into your life. Okay. So do not let this, do not let uh, the, the sun go down means deal with it and deal with it appropriately. So we need to understand anger. We have, or we got anger. We need to understand anger. And again, 
what's going on inside of us from an anger perspective. How do we address it? How do we, how do we, how do we express? Let's talk about that. How do we, are we expressing our anger? Okay. Are you, are you passive in your expression of anger or are you aggressive in your expression of anger? Okay. Again, some people will say, I don't really have an anger. I don't, I don't really get angry easy. I don't have anger problems. I don't have anger management issues, whatever. Well, that's fine. You can say that, but let's understand this a little bit more to perhaps help you to understand that we do get angry. Okay. And we need to express that anger, but how do we express it? We need to express it in a healthy way, but we can become passive about it or aggressive of it in it. And both of those are unhealthy. An example of passive expression of anger would be, um, so let's just say something happens. Okay. Something happens. Somebody does something. Somebody says something, whatever your situation is. What type of person are you? Now, a lot of people that we talk to, they're passive in their anger. And they think that because they're passive, that they don't have an anger issue. Well, they do. They just have, they just don't understand what it means to be passive. Well, uh, some examples would be, so you're angry. And now because you're so angry, you're so agitated. What you do is you just be quiet. You go silent. You don't talk to the person. You just isolate yourself. Okay. Silence is a passive way of addressing or expressing, I should say, not addressing, expressing your anger. Okay. Um, another one, and this is, this is something that's really big is avoiding conflict. There are people that are so angry and they're angry because something's going on in the relationship or whatever, something's going on in them and there's conflict. And what they'll do is they'll be so angry, but they'll just avoid the conflict. In other words, they just won't deal with it. They won't talk to the person. They won't address the issue at hand. They won't communicate to their spouse. Okay. They won't go. Good example is the Bible tells us, go to your brother. They won't do that. You want to know why that doesn't happen in, in the church? Mostly, even though we see it in the book of Matthew that, you know, we should go to our, our brother. We should go to our sister. Okay. If we think they have an odd against us, we need to go to them. Obviously that would include if there's something going on with us and we have an issue, you know, the, the example of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the example of that Tasha and Precious gave where, you know, they had something going on there. Um, they went to each other or one went to the other and it allowed that situation to be, be worked out. Well, again, if you are passive in your anger, so you're angry and you don't, you just want to avoid the conflict, go silent. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to talk to that person. Okay. Well, that anger is passive and that's unhealthy. Okay. Um, another expression of passive anger would be you're, you're easily annoyed. Are you a person that, that gets easily annoyed? Just, you're just you're just annoyed by a lot of things and you get annoyed easily. What about impatience? That's a good one. That's something that I suffered from, probably still do in many cases, okay? Dealing with impatience, okay? Impatience. Um, the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse number 18, a hot-tempered man stirs up dissension, but a patient man calms a quarrel. Are you impatient? Again, that's a passive expression of anger. You're so angry that you, you, you just become impatient with people, constantly sitting there and tapping your foot and tapping the, 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 the table, clicking the pen. You're angry. You're angry because of something that's going on external as well as internal. You want the conversation to move. You don't want to sit there. You don't want to listen to what they say. You're not interested in their side of the story. You don't want to see it from their perspective. You're impatient. And that's stemming from your anger. Do you hear me? It, it, clicking the pen. You know, what, I, uh, I used to do this one. This is me. Let me tell on me. I know you're perfect. I'm not. But this is one thing I would do. I would be sitting there and somebody would be talking to me and I'd be doing this. I'd be constantly looking at my watch, looking at my watch. It's, so what am I doing? I'm impatient. I'm irritated. I'm frustrated. That's another one. 
that's in, come on, let's just be honest. Another passive expression of our anger is frustration. Okay, frustration. So if you're one that's, you may say, oh, I don't have anger problems, but you say, but I'm just always frustrated. Frustrated with the world, I'm frustrated with this, I'm frustrated with that, I'm frustrated with myself. Wait, no, you're, you have anger issues. Yeah, you probably haven't seen it this way, have you? So that would be another passive expression of anger. Okay, think in terms of a thermometer, okay? You got this anger and you got frustration, you have uh, impatience, you have uh, avoiding conflict. Your, your barometer, as it were, is just rising and rising and rising. That anger is, is getting to a place. Uh, of course, it's already at a place that's unhealthy, but it's just growing and growing and growing. So that frustration, that feeling of, of distress in your life is all stemming from your anger. Okay. And you're not handling it in a healthy way. What about if you're um, infuriated? Many people become infuriated with things, uh, <laughs> ticked off. You're just ticked off. You can put another word in there. I won't do it, but they're just ticked off, constantly ticked off. You just see people sometimes just, they're, they're just infuriated. They wake up infuriated. Okay. So again, if you're infuriated um, and, and just ticked off, then it, you have a passive, you're not expressing it externally. You're not aggressive with it. You're passive with it. Okay. Um, jealousy, jealousy and being jealous and envious of other people. You know what? We're jealous of other people and things, groups. We're envious of other people, things they have. You know, that stems from anger. We're angry. We're angry because, again, our view of ourselves is that, well, that group has it, that person has it, they have it. You know, there's people today that are out there, they're angry, they're angry at rich people. They're angry at them. And they're also jealous, okay? But they're expressing it in a passive way. They're, they're just jealous. They're envious. They're offended. That's another one. That's another form of, of, of passive expression of anger is being offended. If you're, if you're easily offended or you're consistently, constantly becoming offended, offended, of course, in the Bible is the Greek word uh, scandalon, which is where we get the word scandal. Okay. When you're offended, you create a scandal both internally and you're going to express it externally in your relationships and communication with other people. Okay. So again, uh, being jealous of, of people stems from your anger. You're angry because they have something you don't. <clears throat> they drive a certain car and you don't. They live in this neighborhood and you don't. So you're angry. You want your way. You're the little, you're the, you're the little kid. You're an adult now, <clears throat> but you're the little kid at the grocery store, at the checkout counter, that wants the balloon, okay, and, and asks mommy for the balloon, and mommy is not going to get you the balloon, so, <clears throat> so you're going to fall out, you're going to act up, okay? That's, that's because that wasn't handled correctly, today you're now, a, 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 you know, a, a grown adult acting out. And your anger, in this case, is being acted out or being expressed in a passive type way. Doesn't mean the anger is not there. It just means that your expression of it is not outward, it's inward. So I'm offended. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm done with that person. I'm, I'm not, nothing to say to that person ever again. And you're, well, you're internalizing it all. You're being passive there. Um, there are people that become, they're so angry, they, they become nauseated. Okay? nauseated they're just so angry their their anger has brought them to 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 being nauseated repulsed unforgiving that's another uh passive expression of anger so i'm angry and i'm just i'm not going to forgive anybody you know again you're not aggressive about it but you're just holding it in all right bitter 
bitterness. Bitterness is, is anger and disappointment. So we're angry, you're disappointed, because perhaps we weren't treated fairly. Remember, I said last time, I'm not going to go into it, there's a huge difference between fairness and justice. Okay, we're talking about being just, not fair. So, because fair is, or fairness is a moving target. Okay, it's subjective. It's not objective. It's based on your own determination or definition. So, if something's not fair, it's not fair to you. And then you can become bitter through the passive expression of your anger. Or, or you can even take it to where that bitterness become, you become resentful, which is, which is bitter, but it's uh, it, it's indignation. It's it's bitter indignation because of your view that you have been treated unfairly. What about depression? You know, there's a correlation between anger and depression. Okay, there's a uh, in the anger anxiety complex. Depression is one of the other manifestations or linkages to that passive anger. People are unhappy, despondent, what have you. They're just depressed because they're passive or passively expressing their anger, okay? Um, Another passive expression would be hatred. You know, hatred doesn't have to be, is not aggressive. Hatred can be passive. It It can turn to aggression, but... It's passive in where internally you have an intense dislike for someone or something or some people group. It's really, you talk about racism? Racism in many cases, watch this now, is a passive expression of anger. Nobody's they're not necessarily aggressively doing something, but passively doing something. And this is why I always have said I don't care what the color of your skin is. When people say, oh, I can't be racist because I'm this color, they go, you're a liar, okay? Because you can have such a hatred or dislike towards something that you become racist through the passive expression of anger. And that's where it's demonstrated, okay? So, uh, and 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 let me give you another one. Um, you could be passive in your expression of anger and have malice in your heart. So you're not doing anything, but you are thinking it. You have a desire. You didn't, it didn't manifest, but the desire is the desire, man. If I, well, if I could just get them back. Retaliation. Oh yeah. We get, we get so, so agitated. We, we become, uh, 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 you know, so, so infuriated and ticked off that boy, if I could just do this, I, 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 I wish I could, I, I'm not going to do it, but if I could, I'd blow their head. Uh-huh. Yeah. Passive expression of your anger. Then of course you could be aggressive with it. You can express your anger aggressively. How do we do that? Okay. Now you should be sitting there as we all, as, as, as we all do and sit back and say, well, gee, I did I didn't really know this stuff. I, I didn't know that I that being uh, ticked off or frustrated or uh, impatient or avoiding conflict is is tied to anger. Yes, it is. It's just you're passively expressing it. You got it. Understand this. Okay. Let's see if there's any comments. Uh, right quick. Um, okay. No comments. Out. Okay. Um, aggressive expression of anger. Okay. Here's some real good ones. Okay. Uh, this comes up quite a bit in our, in our, in our coaching sarcasm. So you're angry and your expression of your anger is aggressive and you're sarcastic. You make a mockery of something or someone. Now this comes up in many times when we're coaching and counseling couples is I'll hear sarcastic comments many times from the husband towards the spouse, the wife. And then I'll say, well, you know, what you, you, which, what are you angry about? And they're like, well, I'm not angry. Well, your sarcasm 
is an expression of your internal anger. Oh, yes, you are. You're angry about something. Something's going on, and your sarcasm, your mockery of your wife is telling me you're angry at her about something, whatever it may be. And, of course, you're angry at yourself many times because of the insecurities and inferiority complex that exists in a lot of people. May not show it on the outside because of their arrested development, okay, and their need to create a pseudo identity that lets you think on the outside, I'm good, I'm okay, I'm confident, and all this other stuff. But inside, struggling, okay. Um, so the sarcasm and mockery is a is a uh, aggressive expression of anger, criticism. Okay. Now I've talked to a lot of people and have gotten in some serious conversations um, to where they've almost become debates about criticism. And of course, people say, well, let me give you some constructive criticism. So let's just look at that in a relationship like a marriage. Okay. Or maybe you're dating, maybe you're, maybe you're um, thinking about marriage, maybe you're engaged. And now you, one of one of the the male or the female, somebody, you're angry. Okay, many times you're angry because you didn't get your way. Um, you're been your you you got all this conflict going on inside of you. You're you're angry, and now you begin to criticize the other person on a consistent basis. In other words, if you're if you're someone who is consistently finding faults in other people then you're looking to criticize because criticism is fault finding and it's basically it's disapproval of someone else or what someone else is doing okay so that criticism is a is an aggressive expression of your anger why are you criticizing somebody why why, why would you critique find fault and disapprove what other people say and do. Why, why would you? Why would you do that? Explain yourself why you would do that. Why would you not, from a from a compassionate heart and one who looks to have a healthy relationship, rather side with correcting somebody in something that is perhaps wrong, correct them rather than criticize, find a fault, you do this, you do that. You're always doing that. That is, again, I see this all the time. Well, you're always, you're always doing this. You're, you, you know, you, your problem is, you know, her problem is, his problem is you're disapproving somebody a lot. You know, they're, you're, you're just, you're just always late. Criti okay. That's, you're being critical. I'm not saying what the person's doing is, is, is right or wrong. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about your expression of your anger is coming out and or it's being expressed rather by your criticism. You get you you seeing this? Oh, this is oh, this is touching somebody. Okay. Um, ridicule. It, that would be an an, uh, an aggressive expression of anger. Okay. Belittling somebody. Ridic uh, ridicule. Uh, 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 belittling. Being malicious in it. That's a that's a that's a, a aggressive expression of your anger, gossiping about other people. Oh, that's that's huge in churches, right? Gossiping. Okay, so your 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 anger. Yeah, I know you're probably thinking, well, how does that how does gossip tie into anger? Well, I'm angry. Remember, I'm there's external factors and internal factors. I'm angry at all the stuff outside. I'm angry at the stuff inside, and now I'm going to express it aggressively and i'm going to talk about i'm going to gossip i'm going to slander someone else because i'm angry i'm angry because that ministry is doing something so you know what i'm doing i'm going to go on a campaign and i'm going to gossip about them i'm going to slander them i'm going to defame them i'm going to talk about them i'm going to talk about that person we have to be careful because it's tied to anger. I'm angry. I'm again. Remember, we, this stuff moves in and out. Passive aggressive, passive aggressive, up down. Okay. I'm jealous. I'm envious. 
Now that's passive, but it can flip to aggressive expression of anger. And now I'm slandering, I'm gossiping, I'm talking about the person. All right. That again is, is how this stuff works all tied to anger. Okay. What about being judgmental? Bible says, talks about getting the, before you get the speck out of your brother's eye, work on the, the, the full length two by four beam that's in your own eye. Then you can begin to go to your brother and uh, bring correction or talk about some issues. So what do we say? Judge, uh, a judgmental view being, uh, you know, just judging other people, judging what they do, having that critical view. Not only are you criticizing, but you're judging. You're no good. This person's no good. Oh my goodness, we do this all the time. Can I can I really talk to you? So we we deal with the spirit of Jezebel. We teach on it, we educate, we bring the correlation between Jezebel and narcissism. And and that's good. That's healthy. We need to educate, we need to understand, and that's a very, very strong thing to do. However, like a lot of things, people, specifically believers, they will take something and they will hear a new word like Jezebel and narcissism, and now everything is Jezebel. Everything is about a narcissism or everybody's a narcissist. And it's ridiculous. But what what's what am I saying? Well, I'm saying that you're angry and your expression of your anger is labeling or judging somebody as Je Jezebel or a narcissist. Now they may well be. I'm not saying they're not. But again, we have to understand our anger. Stop, quit trying to fix other people. Just understand you. If you're judging other people and, and indiscriminately using titles and terms like Jezebel or narcissism, and you're judging that person and have a critical view. I mean, I, I talk to couples all the time and they'll say that their husband or their wife is a narcissist and I'll, I'll talk to them and we'll, we'll have dialogue and we'll go down the journey. And I'm like, you're not a narcissist. You may have narcissistic characteristics. It doesn't mean you're a narcissist, okay? But there's this judgment, there's this critical view of the spouse. And believe me, I know a lot of marriages that have been broken up or even in divorce courts as we speak because of just having a critical view of the other person, okay? Um, another thing uh, as it pertains to an aggressive expression of anger is humiliating other people. Reducing someone to a lower position um, in your own eyes or in their eyes, whatever it may be, to, to, to get them, to make them or to have them uh, take on a feeling of shame or being ashamed or embarrassed, humiliating that person. You know, when, when somebody humiliates somebody else in public, especially, that is an aggressive expression of their anger, of their anger. So this is why you get to ask the person, what are you angry about? They just humiliated somebody else. What, what are you angry about? What, your anger, you're, 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 you're angry and therefore you just manifested and demonstrated and expressed it outwardly, aggressively through humiliation. There are other times our uh, aggressive expression of anger can actually um, incite or provoke stir things up. Have you ever been around somebody and, 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 you know, there's this feeling that things have gotten stirred up in the relationship or in the conversation, there's just this stirring up. Yeah. That's because provoking we, okay. What does the Bible say? Fathers provoke or another word for provoke would be in sight. Provoke not your children to wrath. Wrath, another form of anger. We're going to talk more about that down the road as we go through this whole series on anger. Okay? But provoke not, incite, don't stir up your children to wrath. So an, an, an aggressive expression of anger is when we become, or we, I shouldn't we become, but we stir other people up to anger. We can stir them up. Now, we can't make them, don't hear me, hear my words. 
We cannot make someone else angry, but we can stir it up. We can become, you know, through drama. Have you ever been around somebody who's always creating scandal or very dramatic every time you talk to them? There's a lot of drama going on. And then they manifest, they trigger, they're angry, and they stir things up. Come on, somebody. You know I'm telling the truth. Okay? So, again, that's them expressing their anger in an aggressive way. What about, what about, and again, we talked about this before, that one of the Greek words in the New Testament about anger is to be, is to agitate agitate to the point of boiling. That's another outward expression or aggressive expression of anger. Okay. Agitation. Agitation is trouble. When you have trouble, you're, you know, there's just trouble being stirred up in your own mind or your feelings. Okay. And therefore your expression of that, that agitation you have is to agitate, provoke, and incite other people. You got that? A um, few more. Bullying is an exp- is a is an aggressive expression of anger. What is bullying? Bullying is the abuse or mistreatment of other people or somebody else. Okay, so that's another way of ex- of uh, aggressive expression of anger. Bringing damage. We can we can be so aggressive in our expression of anger that we bring or we desire to bring damage into somebody's life. What is that damage? Well, loss, harm. Again, we're not talking about physically hurting somebody. It can include that, but it's just you know bringing some some harm into that person's life, emotional harm, okay, um, to their property, loss to their property, breaking a window, breaking. You know, when a, a good example would be the proverbial husband who's so angry. And he's expressing it aggressively that he puts his fist through the drywall in the house. What has he done? He's brought damage, among other things. But he's brought damage. That is a uh, aggressive expression of anger. Violence, it can turn into violence, of course. Okay, physical force um, where you're intending to hurt somebody else. And, it, and it's not just violence you know, where your behavior is, is, or you're, you're demonstrating violent behavior and you, you, you actually, uh, did something with the intention just to harm them, but it's also the intention to intimidate them. Okay. Psychological games, keep them, keep them submissive through violent behavior. That's a, that's a, uh, aggressive expression of anger, beating up somebody or, or to, to beat, actually, you could even say beat up or beat down somebody. And, and don't think in terms on that one, as it pertains simply to physical beating somebody up, okay, punching them or slapping them, whatever, not necessarily. I'm, what, have you ever been beat up emotionally? Have you ever been worn down by somebody else? You feel worn out, destroyed just through conversation. So you can beat somebody down with your words. And that is, again, another aggressive expression of anger. And, of course, the, 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 the obviously common sense ones would be um, where your, your aggressive expression of anger is where you're enraged or you have rage. That, now, that is a negative passion. It's, it's being passionate um, in its uncontrollable temper. You ever see somebody, perhaps it's been you. I know I've, I know I've there, you know, when I was younger, I mean, just, just uncontrollable anger. I would be so angry and I would just, you know, not necessarily hurting other people, but I'd become so angry, throw my cell phone, whatever, you know, it, again, it's that frustration that is brewing in a passive expression, but then flips to where the top blows up. And now I'm just enraged and I have uncontrollable temper. Um, obviously, um, some people, unfortunately, can it go? It can go down the path to where uh, they murder somebody. They actually take the life of somebody else, or take their own life. Suicide. That would be an aggressive expression of anger. Okay, so, so again, this you know, I just wanted to give you guys today some of these uh, 
some some understanding as it pertains to passive and aggressive expressions of anger. Now, I, I mentioned, and we have a few minutes, and we could do this really quick. Uh, I could just give you a, a couple. I, I won't give you the whole quiz about anger, okay? Um, and taking the anger quiz, and and just here's a few, and and you just have to write down is if this is true or false about you. So let's just say, for example, and I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a statement here and you just say if it's true or false for you. Watch this now. Um, the statement is, I don't show my anger about everything that makes me mad, but when I do, look out. <laughs> In other words, I don't express my anger. I don't show my anger a lot, but when I do, Oh, everybody get out of my way. Is that a true statement about you? Are you that type of person? Well, if so, don't be condemned about it. Just understand it. Okay? And we can help you. Another statement, I still get angry when I think of the bad things people did to me in the past. Are you constantly reflecting of what happened to you yesterday? What happened to you last week, last month, last year? 10 years, 30 years ago, are you still reflecting on what happened to you in past relationships? Okay. You're still getting angry about what somebody did to you. Well, then that would be a true statement about you, wouldn't it? What about this? Waiting in line or waiting for other people really gets me annoyed. <laughs> Is that you? Well, if true, say it. You say it's true. If it's false, mark it as false. What about this statement? Very simple statement. I fly off the handle easily. I really, I'm quick to fly off the handle. Is that true or false about you? What about this one? I often find myself having heated arguments with the people that are close to me. Are you having arguments with your spouse? Heated arguments consistently? What about your parents? You're now grown, I mean, you're now a grown adult, but your parents are still living, you're still having heated arguments. What about your siblings? your brother, your sister? Are you consistently? Well, if so, say it's true. How about this? I sometimes lie awake at night and I think about the things that have upset me the most during the day. If that's you, it's true. What about this? I find it very hard to forgive someone who has done me wrong. Is that true about you? How about this statement? I get angry with myself when I lose control or I feel I've lost control of my emotions. I get angry at myself. Is that true about you? If so, jot it down as true. How about this? People really irritate me when they don't behave the way they should or when they act like they don't have the good sense of a head of lettuce. Is that true? Do you get irritated because people don't behave the way they should? Are you focused in on other people? If so, you got to jot that down as true. What about this one? I get so, so upset about things and I become, I get to the point of feeling sick. Weak spells, headaches, stomach, nausea, whatever it may be. If that's you, then jot it down as true. What about this statement? People I've trusted have often let me down, leaving me feeling angry and betrayed. Is that you? If so, mark that as true. When things don't go my way, I often become depressed. Hmm. Is that true about you? Or is that false? How about this? I'm, I'm, I'm prone to take frustration so badly that I can't put it out of my mind. In other words, I'm so frustrated. I can't think. I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm I'm confused. I can't pray. I can't talk to people. I'm just so frustrated. I'm out of it. I lose it. That's true. Just jot it down it, that it's true. What about this? I'm so angry that sometimes I can't even remember what I said or did. Is that true about you? How about this one? I have trouble in relationships and I have trouble on my job because of my temper. Constantly flying off the edge. Some people, here's another statement, are people or some people are afraid of my bad temper. Is that true about you? What about this? When I'm angry, frustrated, or wounded, I comfort myself by eating, using alcohol, drugs, 
sex, spending. Is that true about you? If so, jot it down. How about this statement? When somebody frustrates me, I want to get even. Is that true about you? If so, jot it down. How about this statement? I've gotten so angry at times, I've become physically violent, hitting other people or breaking things or throwing things across the room. Is that you? Come on, just, just be honest with you. We're here to help you. I'm a real, how about this statement? I'm, I'm, I felt so angry. I've actually thought about taking somebody's life. Is that you? I've become so frustrated. I've thought about taking my own life. Is that a true statement about you? Well, let me just close here by saying this. If, if, if in those, and I didn't read all of them, but if you've answered true to, you know, eight or more of those, then I can say this, you have an anger management problem. You need coaching. You need counseling. You need therapy. You need deliverance. You need help. Okay? Perhaps you answered yes to five to, to eight, somewhere in that range. Well, you probably, you're probably just like everybody else. And we would consider, even though it may be dysfunctional, we would consider that normal management skills, but you still need some coaching in your life to help you, but you're not at that anger management problem level. And of course, if you didn't have that many, maybe you had four or less, then I would say that you're pretty much in control of your anger. You're at least better than most people in this arena. So just understand today that anger affects all of us. We need to understand anger, what it is. That's why we put videos like this out there. That's why we're talking about this. We need to understand that when we express something either either passively or aggressively, that it's stemming a lot from anger. And we need to monitor ourselves, watch this stuff, be focused on ourselves, stay in our lane, deal with us. And also understand that anger can be used in a manner that it helps us to create and solve problems rather than bring us to a place of agitation and boiling to where we snap, typically on other people, ultimately upon ourselves. So I pray this was a blessing. I'm going to see if we have any comments from uh, anyone. Let me just go over to our good friends out there on YouTube. And let's see, what do we have here? A lot of comments on YouTube, as always. Okay, let's see. And um, Yep, so, okay, so sounds like a narcissist personality, maybe a form of anger. Yeah, I mean, well, narcissist is definitely angry. There's, there's no question about that. Um, Timothy says we should respond in the spirit without being moved or or bothered. Well, yeah, and and responded in if responding in the spirit or by the spirit. Understand that there may be some anger. Again, that's that righteous indignation. I mean. The Bible says God's angry. Does that mean that he's not in the spirit? No, he's in the spirit. So we need what we need to do is understand what does that look like, okay? Um, Dolly says this uh, takes practice. Even people that does not have the Holy Spirit can control and deal with anger in a healthy way. How much more us? Take ownership, renew your mind, and practice. Yes, Dolly, I agree with you. Uh, Thomas, thank you, says, thank you for explaining what internalizing or internal or internalizing anger looks like. You're most certainly welcome. Paul says, I appreciate and understand your truth, but there are circumstances that cannot be attributed to self. For example, a Christian can have a flashback that reveals an extreme trauma from childhood. Um, yeah, but that's still you. I mean, that's your flashback. That's your uh, uh, post-traumatic stress that's still you. And so again, yes, there are circumstances. That's what I was saying. Uh, was that Paul? Yeah. I was expressing is that there are external things that factor into, okay. Things that happened to us, things that was said to us, things we experienced, things that were traumatic and they do affect us. 
What we have to do is own that. That's not for other people to fix because they couldn't fix it if they tried. We have to own that and deal with it. And that's why, Paul, we do the coaching, the counseling, the therapy, and deliverance that we do here is to help people get through that. So that was good. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Um, I once heard a preacher say, bitterness is the root of sarcasm. Okay. Um, yes, I don't like malicious criticism. Okay. I have done it before. Gossiping is easy to get caught up in. Yes, I think that's a lot of us. Uh, Susanna, hey, Susanna, the word sarcasm comes from the Greek word which means to cut flesh. Yes, when we're sarcastic, I agree. We're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting. Is anger part of the Jezebel spirit? It can well be. It can well be. Uh, Jezebel, that spirit, does have a fury about it, and it will look to 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 manipulate in the area of, of obviously, your emotions, get you to act unhealthily and in an unhealthy way with your emotions, specifically anger. So, um, good. All right. Well, you guys on YouTube, we love you, and, and we appreciate all of your comments. Thank you so much. Please share the video. Um, I do see a hand, somebody's hand is up and, oh, let's see, that is Dixie. Dixie, go ahead. Your hand is up. It is dear to all of our hearts right now because we need to, uh, we need to deal with it and address it and understand that it is so unhealthy for us to have prolonged anger. I've got a question. Okay. And um, this is where someone who has been attacked by the Jezebel spirit and they have become angry. They're angry because of the mistreatment. They're angry because of the hurt that they have experienced from this, the, uh, these persons with that spirit. I want, my question is, is that what do they do saying they are actually a victim of of that spirit's anger you know which it can be it can you know uh demonstrate a lot of anger what do they do to keep from becoming themselves uh angry and there's a stemming from unforgiveness what do they do apostle okay well again when you become angry your your anger is a it's an early warning system it's telling you something's wrong. So embrace the anger to say, yeah, I'm angry. I'm angry. Somebody, you know, I'm being attacked by the Jezebel spirit or the narcissistic personality in somebody. Okay, I'm angry now. What am I what? angry about? What's going on? Am I angry because I feel like I'm being taken advantage of? Well, if that's the case, then understand that you, why are you being taken advantage of? Why don't you own it and set boundaries? Nobody can take advantage of you. Nobody can abuse you unless you allow it. Many people become enablers. What it, what it will show you is that you're an enabler. You're enabling some, some dysfunctional behavior like narcissism or, again, using the term Jezebel. I'm being attacked by Jezebel. You know, Sweetheart, we get this a lot. People say, I just don't know what to do. I'm being attacked by Jezebel. I'm, and I'm like, well, cut it off. Stop it. Stop it. Stop allowing that Jezebel spirit to get the advantage in your life. That scripture I read earlier that talked about don't give opportunity to the devil. When we don't address our anger in a healthy way and understand I'm angry, now what am I angry about? And then get to the root of that, deal with it, make the behavioral modifications or the changes, get deliverance if necessary. If we don't do that, the enemy, in this case Jezebel, is going to have opportunity to just tear your life up. We have... When are we as believers going to understand that we have authority, we have dominion, we have the power, we're the head and not the tail, we're above and not beneath, we're the ones that have the answers. Again, use the anger to solve the problem. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, I'm, okay, I'm angry. I'm going to use that anger and I'm going to go on a journey and I'm going to find out what I'm angry about, what's going on. I'm frustrated. Okay, I'll use me, for example. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. So now what? Well, deal with the frustration. What am I frustrated about? Well, I have a poor view about me because I'm looking at what everybody else is doing and I'm not doing what they're doing. Okay. Pointed me to the problem. Now address it. What do I need to do? Renew my mind. Think better of myself. Think more healthy about myself. Okay. 
So did I did I answer that for you? Well, actually, if the person this happened with as a child, what do they do to defend themselves as a child if a parent is narcissistic and has a Jezebel spirit? I'm sorry, I forgot that part. Okay, so the person is a is a child and they were attacked by the Jezebel spirit when they were a child. Now they're grown they're a grown adult now, I'm assuming. Yes. Are they you're up you're on mute. I can't hear you. Are they a grown adult now? I need to know. Yes. Yes, okay. they are a grown adult. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry no. Did. Okay, so it happened when they were a child. Well, again, yes. so things happen when we're a child, and of course, to that, that person Paul, that guy Paul on YouTube, you know, there's things that happen to us. Well, yes, but even with that, now you know, when I was a child, I spake as a child, but now that I've become a grown adult, I put away childish things. So what is that saying? That means I have to deal, I still have to deal with that. And I have to go in and say, okay, that may have been the gateway, the pathway to a lot of behavioral problems or even, you know, uh, uh, oppression from the, from demonic spirits. But I have to deal with that. It's, it's my life. I, I can't just say, well, it's, you know, it just happened and it's just the way I am. You're going to have that ball and chain the rest of your life? Cut the cord, break the chain. Break the fetter. Get rid of that. You can do it. Nobody can do it for you. So yes, it's unfortunate that that happened when you were young. Yes, uh, there's a reason why some some dysfunction in your life or some 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 behavioral problems or whatever it may be, uh, or emotional turmoil or, or even demonic oppression has taken place. Yes, you were young and you were defenseless. Okay, but you're not defenseless anymore any longer. What you need to do is understand that the weapons of your warfare are not are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Cast down those imaginations. Remove yourself from that event uh, emotionally, psychologically, and of course spiritually. That is not who you are. Understand who you are. You know, you talked about this. We heard uh, recently the man in the mirror. See who the true man in the mirror is, and that's not based on. What happened when I was a child, that's based on what uh, Christ's redemptive work. I now substitute my identity for his identity. I bring him into my life and the life I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So that's a renewing of the mind process. But you as an adult, you own it. Yes, these things happen. We don't deny, we don't make light of the fact that they did. But the facts remain. You are in control of your life. Now, if you don't understand that, then you're going to have a real hard time in life. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be angry, bitter, enraged, and you're going to have a victim mentality. And I'm here, we're here to tell you, you are not a victim. The world wants you to think you're a victim. You are not a victim. Not in the kingdom of God. That ain't going to fly. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I do have a chat. Um, what do I mean by cut it off? Okay. Must have been the statement that I just said. Uh, cut it off. In other words, break your emotional and mental uh, connection to it. You constantly thinking about it. So somebody did you wrong when you were young. Let's say you were a child, you were molested. Horrible. You were molested or physically abused, okay? Your mind is retaining that in your subconscious, but you consciously, your conscious mind can begin to send signals to your subconscious mind that says, you know what? I'm going to remove myself from that. I'm not going to see myself as that little child that was molested. And I'm not denying that it happened, but I'm not going to see that and see myself as inferior, as no good, as discarded, as disgraced, and as shameful. I mentally and emotionally, spiritually it's already been done by Christ, but I cut that off. I no longer have my soul tied to that event. 